Okay, we're recording. This is Wrong Speed Record Chat number 55. We have Julie Kane. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good, good, nervous. <laughs> Don't need to be nervous. Where, uh, okay, we normally start these with this question. Where are you right now? Right this second. I'm yeah. in my living room in Birmingham. Birmingham. Okay. Not Alabama. <laughs> oh, how, and how long have you lived in Birmingham? Ooh, um, we moved up here in March 2016. So a lot longer than it feels like. Right. So you've been there, what, where are we? Five years. Uh, so over five years. Yeah. 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 And you moved from? London. South that's London. Where, that's where I met you, right? In London. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not too sure when that first was, but. Must have been 2005. I can't quite remember. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah, I think it might have been at an all day or at the windmill, a rip this joint one. Sounds very likely. And um, so Julie is uh, in, in, our, in the world we hang out in, a photographer, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a photographer. Yes. So that's that, that's how we would have met, probably, as you'd have been taking yeah. pictures. Um, Absolutely. And then we would have all been looking at your website, making sure that we didn't have any bogeys coming out of our nose or anything in the pictures. Um, I'm guessing. Probably <laughs> until you wanted them. Uh, we, yeah, which we did, right? At one point. Yeah. 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 Uh, there is a photo of um, Bob blowing his nose that yeah. gets used quite a lot. No, he hates it as well. He, I know, poor Bob. But it's such a great picture. I went through a phase. I'm going to show an example. I went through a phase of wanting uh, pictures the second after we finished playing. Um, and I would probably still be in that phase if we were playing. <laughs> yeah. um, but so this is one. This is uh, the Supersonic Festival. Uh, what, the, what do we call these? Like, I always forget what they're called. Program. Yeah. Um, from 2019. Um, and there's the picture of that you took of us oh, yeah. that was used. And that was the second after we finished playing, um, I think the venue was called Centrala. Yeah, yeah, Centrala in Birmingham. Great venue, um, one of the best. Um, yeah, we've done some zine fairs there, I think since then, but. Yeah, yeah, because I think that picture was taken was in late 2018. But, um, yeah. So um, how did you get into photography? Why? Ooh, why? Um, oh God, I don't know, to be honest. Um, my grandmother always took photos. Um, she was a gardener and she took loads of photos and candids and stuff and I got really into it. And then I nicked my parents um, Pentax K1000, um, which is really old when I was like 16. 15, 16, and just did loads of like candid shots and started taking um, pictures of like high school bands, um, which was super fun. And they all like needed to look like really sharp, like um, like alternative press like style. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. I got a bit bored with that. So I started shooting digital and experimenting a bit more with, well, swirl and using light and stuff like that. I guess. Yeah. Lots of candid shots, lots of trees, tons of trees, but yeah. And, and um, so you say you've moved to digital, but mm, you're yeah. developing stuff as well. Um, so I didn't, I, I didn't start out learning any of that. Um, and I did a little bit at university, but, um, but I just didn't really have the opportunity. And then it was kind of cost prohibitive and yeah, living in London, not having enough space. And so, so I have in the past, um, but I don't know that if I just had the chemicals, I could just pick it up and do it again. Um, so yeah, I've just been shooting digital so, so long. Because your, e your email, I'm not going to give your whole email away. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it has, it has the term F stop in it, F for, for yeah. deep stop. And I had a brief time at college <laughs> um, and I did photography development and f-stop is something to do with photography isn't it that's what yeah. yeah 
that is yeah it's how much light gets let the aperture how much light gets let in so you're referencing you're referencing that world even though you've switched to digital well you still you still get aperture on digital so right okay yeah yeah sorry i've got a lens um it's basically how much light comes in the this is where i get it all wrong and i've mixed up all my terms Uh, (laughs) but so like if you're shooting really dark then you want like yeah, as much light in as possible. So you have a really like small number at f-stop. Okay, there you go. There's, there's, one, for, there's one for the brain, I didn't know. <laughs> um, so um, um, you aren't from England. No. So what happened there? How have you ended up here? Um, my, my dad's ex-military. Um, from Scotland originally, moved to the States, met my mom. Um, we moved all over. We lived a couple of different states and we lived in Panama for a while, um, Central America. And then we moved here a very long time ago in, well, in 97. So, yeah. Hmm. And the Birmingham, so, Birmingham accent hasn't rubbed off on you yet. No, no. I don't know. I think 20 odd years. I, I, I don't have a British accent, so I don't think the the Birmingham one's gonna. <laughs> get I, so I have you down as being um, from Connecticut, just purely because I looked it up on your Facebook page, yeah. um, and and uh, so we we chatted before, and you said perhaps your mum was from Connecticut. Mm. My mom is from Connecticut. Um, my birth certificate says Delaware, though. Oh, right. Okay. Damn. Okay. Well, that's I, looked up, I looked up Connecticut, so that's the end of that. Bethlehem, <laughs> Connecticut, to be precise. Um, and so I've got two records from Connecticut because I don't really know many bands from Connecticut apart from the Carpenters, but I don't have any Carpenters. Yeah. Youth of Today are from Connecticut. They're from oh. Connecticut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, look at oh, that. Okay. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Very, uh, uh, very righteous. Uh, vegan i believe and all that business um they're from connecticut and uh dustin moore's from connecticut yeah yeah i don't that's that's the limit of my connecticut knowledge hopefully someone else will step in but yeah honestly i don't know um lots of bands from massachusetts but i couldn't i couldn't tell you any off the top of my head right now (laughs) lots of pop punk in that area um Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I've never been there. I've never been to New York. I've never been anywhere else. And that was yeah. It's it's nice. It's leafy. Um, while the area my yeah my family's from is very leafy. Um, yeah, farmhouses and still working farms like family ones. Um, and yeah, my grand had horses and chickens and like they had goats when my mom was a kid and stuff. But yeah, but then it's only like a 40 minute drive into New York City. Yeah, Um, which we've done. Um, It took us uh, 40 minutes to get there and then I got really lost driving back. So it took us like two and a half hours to get home. If if you ever thought about moving back? Mm, No, I don't know that I, that I, it would be Connecticut that I went to if I ever moved back. but but no, no. things are different in the states. So anyway. healthcare. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just start. <laughs> so you end up moving right. to London. You end up moving to London, and how do you end up discovering like the underground music world that you end up taking pictures of? Honestly, uh, Byron. Um, Byron was playing with One Unique Signal and I went to loads of gigs and then I started going to gigs kind of on my own and was just taking pictures. Something to do when you're kind of waiting around for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sound check and afterwards and all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, I just started taking loads of photos. Um, I think before that, like, I used to go to bigger gigs and, like, um, you know, email and ask for photo passes and stuff um, when I was like at university, um, just really broke. Um, 
oh, I signed up, you know, those people that pass out flyers, um, like outside gigs. So I used to sign up to do those. And then I'd like go in because you get a free ticket after like, you know, you throw out all your flyers. Um, and then I'd go in and I just started shooting bands. Um, and yeah, lots of bands I didn't even know. Um, lots of bands that, that weren't very good. Um, but but yeah, it was practice, practice with low light and stuff. Um, I think I was still shooting film at that point, to be honest. So it was quite expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, but then once I started shooting digital, I, I yeah, started, I guess, experimenting and kind of pushing myself a little bit more. So, so yeah. And then I just started, I guess, inserting myself into places. <laughs> yeah. That's um, I didn't like know physically that. on stage <laughs> well yeah that's cool I, I didn't i didn't know that the people that were handing the leaflets out then got tickets to go into the gigs mm. i remember backing yeah. my way through them all to get into gigs <laughs> yeah it like i think it was as bad being the person handing out the flyers as it was to be the people being handed the flyers but you know when you don't have a job in uni it's a great way to get into gigs so and did Why you get not? much did you get much luck emailing and asking for photo passes so so because of where i'm from i used to email like so okay very embarrassingly now i was really into pop punk when i was a teenager um so i would like email like the bands themselves and be like hey you're coming to london i'm sure you don't have any guest list people like here are some photos i've taken i'll come take some for you and then they'd be like, yeah, all right. And only once um, was my name not on the list, but I still managed to get in. So it was all right. <laughs> I think that was at the, um, where was it? Probably at the Astoria, maybe Mean Fiddler. One of them, um, which I was really surprised because I didn't have a ticket. Um, so yeah, very exciting. Oh, I used to love the Astoria. Did you have favorite venues to do that, to, to go to back then? Um, uh, I used to like the Barfly when it was really dingy, Camden Barfly. What, 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 what actual venue was, the Barfly, did that move around? Or was that like one? Oh, I don't know. It's been a very long time. Um, so I think, so you like left the station, you walked up and it was like above a pub like a really dingy one, um, like on the way between like Camden Town Station and the Roundhouse. Oh, yeah. It could have been the Monarch, um, maybe. Monarch? Yeah, I don't know. Um, it was like, it was so tiny. And then like the state, like the stage was like, I don't know, like a foot off the ground or something. Yeah. And that was, that was fun. Cause you could get really close and like, it was just normal like everybody was just really close yeah so when you move when you're going from the big pop punk gigs or whatever and, the Astoria, yeah. and then you start going to the smaller like and then in the in, like i say in the world we move in there are very yeah. often yeah, small yeah. Low stages like photography wise you got to get better pictures when you're writing amongst it right yeah yeah absolutely especially because i i shoot really wide um like so I don't know, I've been in like photo pits before at like really big venues. And I've just been like looking at other photographers going, nah, it's not even worth taking any pictures because like I can't get like um, uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds at Alexandra Palace. And I was just like, there's no point. There are so many people here with like telescopic lenses. So I was just like, oh, I'll just lean on the bar and watch from like a foot away. Best best kick I've ever seen. Um, but yeah, it just wasn't, yeah, it, I just wouldn't have gotten anything. Um, well, except the stage, but yeah, so any small venue um, is my favorite. No, that's um, like, so, so you're, you're saying that perhaps we met at the windmill or whatever, windmill's ideal for that. Yeah, yeah. And if you were really nice to the sound man, then you could stand behind him. But if you weren't, then... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> really great thing. Um, yeah but like at those sort of places you get properly in amongst it they're um like uh yeah i yeah. um 
So one of, this is the thing, and we mentioned this before we started recording, I, about five or six years ago, or before, more than that, I actually bought off your website a, um, a photo book that you'd done yeah. called This Is DIY. Yep. And I cannot find it anywhere. And then I spoke to you and you haven't even got a copy of that and it's really irritating. But let's talk about that because that was something that as a band we played and it ran for an amount of time. Talk about it. Yeah, I think it, I think it was up for six weeks. It was a group of people from like the London, I guess, scene. Um, oh, I can't even remember who built it. Like Mark Davidson and Rachel Silver Rocket and then um, the guys from Death Pedal. So Alex, Tom, Stu and Wayne. I think they were like the core people who kind of put it together. Um, but forgive me if I'm missing anyone. Um, and yeah, it was great. It was it was amazing. Um, I was I was actually talking to somebody the other day about it, and it was it was a garden shed. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> like it was it was it was, um, in. it was like if you've ever been to like the Tate Modern or whatever, you know that that turbine room, the size of that turbine. Room. Yes. It was like being in the turbine room, but then climbing into a garage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or a transit van. <laughs> like, oh, it was awful. I mean, it was amazing, but it was so sweaty and so like <sighs> airless. Um, but no, it was great. Um, yeah, they, they must have been up for like six or 12 weeks or something. And there was a gig there at least every weekend. And then I think some kind of smaller events in the week um and yeah I bought my first staple gun to put up um like I just printed like hundreds of um just photo well just black and white like printed at work photos that I had taken of like all the bands that were going to play um and then just some other odds odd ones and um stapled them up in like the little foyer um which I thought was hysterical because it was so tiny, but it still had a foyer. <laughs> oh, yeah, it did. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, my first gallery exhibition. Yeah, no, I, I, so I remember there was a lot. There was a lot going on. It was quite exciting. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was wild. It was really cool. Loads of really interesting events as well. So we, we had like well we there were like normal kind of gigs but then there were a couple spoken word things I think at some point somebody might have done a film thing um and then I did my last for my last scene my first scene the last issue I did a wake where we had like a program of events and a couple bands played and then we had some spoken word um and then like some drone in the middle instead of a dj it was very cool um yeah tony from um noise star records helped me sort that out um and sorted out all the equipment and stuff because i had no idea what i was doing uh, but yeah it was really cool yeah i do have those zines right here I will oh, yeah, show you. yeah 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 let's have a look is it called so, colorless green what's it called Color yeah colorless yeah. green ideas yeah. um, so this one is really cool i did the lino print Silver ink is the best thing ever. And then it came with like a remix of a Cove yeah. CD. Sweet, yeah. Um, but yeah, and then loads of art and stuff. And it was all like, um, it was a theme. The theme was like graveyards or something, I think, because it was for a wake. Just looking for something that might actually. So we had some really cool stuff like, And yeah, was, was that at the, was that in Bermondsey? So did we mention it was yeah. in Bermondsey? Yeah. Sorry, in case uh, we didn't no, mention it was in Bermondsey. No, it was in Bermondsey. Yeah, at the biscuit factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a really great summer. Yeah, <laughs> really yeah. of my life. Yeah, yeah. We drove up to it. We lived in Somerset at the time, so we only mm. came up for that one night. So yeah, I think I think we played with. Silent Front. Potentially. They did. Yeah. And um, it was completely packed. 
but obviously it's a small room, so I'm not claiming any great victory musically here, but it was really exciting. It was really excellent to do. Yeah. I mean, you could barely move. I, I think at that gig, I was like sat next to whatever was acting as a monitor, like right next to Paul. <laughs> yeah. <There's, laughs> like, if anyone, could, if you go on your, um, your website, which still exists, even yeah. though it doesn't look like maybe you might not have updated for a while. A while. No, it's it's been a couple of years. Yeah. Since um, so what's the website, yeah. what is the website address? Um, it's fstopqueen.com. Yeah, there's hundreds yep. of pictures from that like a uh, month yeah. or two at that thing. And um, what I sort of noticed, cause I had a look today, just purely because of yeah. that freaking book, which has just really, uh, really irked me somewhat. Um, a lot of fisheye lens action going on. Yeah. <laughs> this is the, like the best money I've ever spent. And I bought it secondhand and I was so excited. Um, and it's my favorite, like my favorite thing ever, um, that lens. So, oh, okay. and, and what digital camera do you use then? Is it like, let's get. Um, so I still shoot Pentax um, because I don't know, it's what I started out with. All my lenses are interchangeable. Um, and the camera I currently have, I got in 2005 um, and it works most of the time now, but it's a Pentax um, K10D, um, which, yeah, it works. Um, every once in a while, it gives me like a black screen when I try to take a picture, but usually I turn it off and back on and it's fine. <laughs> so. <laughs> off and on yeah yep. I mean it's the, the magic um yeah the magic process but um but yeah I don't know it's it's lasted me this long I've gone through many iterations of camera straps which is um yeah but I don't know the camera still works it works in a variety of um weather conditions as well um including um in the pouring rain when Nod plays like first thing at super normal on a Friday night when it's like pissing down. Um, I got pictures of that, no one else did. Oh, this is this is good. We should get in touch. You're endorsing the Pentax, whatever you called it. What did you call it? Yeah. Okay, oh, 10D. I don't even think you can get them anymore. Like, yeah. Yeah. People like, people really like uh, slightly defunct photo machines that's one of the things i've learned over time people like as soon as something as soon as one of them dies it's like love eight mil love shooting eight mil yeah. can't get it anymore you have to send it to wherever you get you know or whatever or do you, do you ever know the um fisher price did a camera you know like a really? toy yeah, yeah yeah i think it was run off normal cassettes okay yeah and so there was a massive massive craze to try and find these things what the hell are they called? You know the film Slacker? You ever watched the film Slacker? Yeah. There's a bit in yeah. that you're in a club and it's shot on one of these cameras and it goes, oh, it's called Pixel Vision. And it goes, oh. goes into pixels, like, because they've shot, anyhow, people really like defunct. That's cool. Yeah, so you were like, oh yeah, my camera's not available anymore. That's almost like a yeah. banner, isn't it? For... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think maybe it's different with digital though, because like film, I don't know, because I have boxes of cameras that, like film cameras, that get used every once in a while. But, but yeah, I don't know. Digital is, is different. Like, once it dies, like, you can't do anything with it. So, so yeah, we'll see. I don't know. There might be, like, a mad rush for Pentax K10Ds now, and then I can sell mine and, and upgrade. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> So, okay, so the, that was your first fanzine, is that right? The yeah. Colors, you know? yeah. Do you call them fanzine? Am, am I, is it fair to call them a fanzine? Uh, maybe. They're like art, art zines. Right. So it's, so they tend to be themed, but not, not about like a thing, more like an abstract idea. Right. So maybe, maybe zines. Like wake. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you do, um, I think you did 10 of them. Is that, am I correct? Yes, you are. Yeah. Um, I have them here. Hold them up. Let's have a look. 
person. And did they all come with CDs? No. So this one, the so issue 10 came with a CD. And then issue six, which is cool. It's like a double cover. It came with a CD. Mutual Extermination Club. Um, and yeah, nice stamp. So yeah, drone. Um, but yeah, so that that came, and then all the all the rest of them were just like um, poetry, photos, stuff like that. I mean, the first one, it all started out because I was. I talk about digital and how I shoot digital all the time, but I was getting really bored of just seeing pictures like online. So like my first one, um, this is the first issue and it's just like a bunch of photos of um, skull hazards. Oh yeah. With like, oh, some words by James Beale. Um, he did like a review and then like just loads of photos and it's nice because there's just so much ink on it that it's like shiny. <laughs> yeah. um, and then yeah some like little less music kind of poem or less music photos just like landscape kind of stuff. So the first one was completely like narcissistic and it was all my photos and then just I got a couple people to write things. Um, and then and then I started talking to more people who, while well, in the music kind of scene we were in, who did other art stuff. And I was just like, right, so I'm doing the scene, send me some stuff. So I think issue two is more um, like a variety of stuff by different people. Like that photo. who ripped this joint from like when he traveled around um, like Southern US. Just, just quickly, um, you, you paused a second. Just, who, who was that again? Sorry, the person. Oh, uh, Rainy. Um, so Rainy took the photo. I'm not sure who it is. Right. Um, but when he traveled around like the Southern US um, at some point. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that guy Rainy, he, so he put gigs on, didn't he? He was ripped this joint. Yeah. Joint. Rip this joint, yeah. Yeah, he did a lot of stuff. And then, oh, and I did an uh, an email interview with Chris Carter from Throbbing Gristle in issue three. Um, he was really nice, really, really nice. But I made like a massive copy and paste error in his, um, in his thing. Like I duplicated part of it twice and he was really kind about it. <laughs> he like sent me an email going, I just wanted to let you know. And I figured it out after I got them all printed, but um, but yeah, and this one has a really cool cover. Yeah, cool. Which is a poem by um by Lee Jackson, um. Yeah, and then other ones. and then I changed the format and I started doing like lino prints and getting other people to do kind of covers and stuff, and and then I was like, let's take that to the more extreme, like the original kind of art stuff. So yeah, so I killed it off, had a wake and everything, and then started a new project. Which is why, which is one of the reasons I was kind of really keen to talk. So I've got the most recent, now this again, this is not, this is more than a zine, what I'm holding here. I don't know what to call it, okay? So I'll let you say what you call it, but it's, it's, it's oh. this here, it's indestructible energy. Is this number 10? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Number 10. So it's, in fact, I've, I've saved it. This is, oh, this is, so Steve Bullock's <laughs> got some bits in there, I thought. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if anyone can read it. So it's really, it's mm -hmm. kind of really beautiful. Like there's like oh, photography and uh, like, uh, what's that, graphic novel -y stuff. That's um, yeah. Dave from Cove, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it does. Um, there's, yeah, he, I think he's in every single one. Right, okay. Uh, yeah. Two, two CDs in this, but each CD there has is. songs by the same, the same artist, same track. Yeah, so they're meant to be played together, the two CDs. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but you can listen to them separately and they all sound really good. So there's two CDs, it's okay. So it's absolutely beautiful. And um, um, what is it? What am, I, what am I holding here? Well, I call it a zine. Um, it, yeah, an art zine. It's, I don't know, I was, like, I started out, I started with, like, the photocopy zine, and then I was like, yeah. oh, I really like the, you know, the making aspect of it. So then, yeah, I started doing other ones. The first one, and every format's different. So the first one is actually just in this bag. Yeah, that's the logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it's, like, loads of little cards and stuff. I was like pulling all this out, looking at it last night, and it's just been so long since I've <laughs> looked at it. I don't even remember like half of it, but it's got like little like lino prints. So this is by um, a guy called Andrew Walter, who's done quite a lot. Um, in fact, him and Dave for issue four, um, we got a gallery space in Brixton Market, um, like yeah, I can't even just like under the arches in like the indoor market thing. And we had it for like three weeks or something when the owner went on holiday um, and we put their stuff up um, and it, it was really great. I think we had like this massive like A0 print, um, like woodcut print that Andrew had done. And we basically put hung everything on the Monday and some guy came in first thing Tuesday morning to buy it. And I was just like, yeah, but you can't have it now. <laughs> And he was just like, oh, and I was like, like, I'll sell it to you, but we don't have anything else that big to like put there. <laughs> it was just like a one of a kind, like, oh, I'll you, try this. you just put like sold on it, right? Yeah. That's yeah. That's the classic move. Yeah. It worked. He was fine. He ended up getting it framed at that shop. So it worked out really nicely. <laughs> but I'm assuming he got it because we just gave it to the framers and. I mean, I think I would have heard from him by now if um, he didn't get it. Yeah, but it was really cool. We did like, um, we did a private view and Dave drew this. It was like, hey Dave, draw a poster for this. And he was like, okay. Like 20 minutes later, this beautiful that, work of art. That is, um, I'm pretty sure that's the first Take Losses t-shirt design. This? I think so yeah, the guy hold the guy. Oh, maybe. I need to. I need to dig it out. Because <laughs> he was in the band. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I'm not surprised. He's great. Um, but then, so we did a private view. We um, borrowed some mini PA speakers from Dropout Studio, um, and did. Um, Oh, Mark Dicker did an in-store with his very new at the time modular synth. It was really cool. And then I had to give the shot back and it was very disappointing. Um, but I don't know, it is what it is. <laughs> to give the shot back, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, it was great. And then the guy continued stalking like li some little bits and pieces. Um, but this was years ago, so they've all either sold or um, I'm assuming he's still there in the same shop in Brixton Market across from Honest Burger. Uh, well, if anyone's uh, if anyone lives down that way, yeah. let us know. Yeah, <laughs> check it out. Um, but but yeah, it was great. And then oh, I don't I lost my train of thought. I don't know what I was talking about. Oh, the format. So yeah, I just started trying to push it a little bit. Um, it's a big so like job. I, I see you. I see you asking for people to like be involved and help out, and it's like it's just so yeah. nice. Like all, I don't know if you can see. It's all like mm -hmm. like its hinges are string. Which I like. yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You, you were going to say you what, what you you. Oh, you know? no, I was just going to say this is from it, like that the one that Dave and Andrew did the gallery thing for. So it's kind of like. Ooh. A bit of a double book. Yeah, it's just nicely. Code for uh, 
they're nicely tactile which i like yeah yeah it, it is it's quite nice and it's got a mixture of like reproduced work it's got some original pieces um so i think the one that you've got has actually quite a lot maybe the most original pieces i've ever had um Very nice um and yeah it's all about like getting people involved and getting people connected and stuff really picking mm. up other people's artwork um yeah meeting new people it kind of gave me like colorless green ideas kind of gave me like an in to like just start talking to people <laughs> i mean mostly at gigs and then yeah i've just expanded it from there Hmm. I'm not going to crowbar music into it, but do you think it got, do you think doing fan, fanzines like this got, was influenced by the music side or, or is this a separate world? Um, I can't say that they're completely separate because most of the people that I've gotten like involved are people I know through music stuff. So people like Dave, um, people like um, like one of the photographers with the green squiggly thing um, is a guy up here called John um, Convery, um, who's a great photographer. Um, and like, I met him through music stuff as well. Um, hmm. I mean, so, so I don't think, I think what I was doing photography wise helped me meet people and find out you know, like you mentioned Silent Front earlier and filled his loads of drawings and he contributed loads and loads to colorless green ideas. Um, and yeah, I don't know, it, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have expanded and it wouldn't have had such um, a variety of art in it without the music people I knew at the time. Well, and now at the time. Uh, it, it, does feel, it does feel connected. It does feel connected. Like yeah, I know, no, absolutely. Yeah, like you've got like yeah. Steve Gullix in here and, and I don't yeah. know, you, you can t tell me if, uh, let's talk about influences for you, but for someone like him, like massively yeah. famous rock photographer, yeah. you know, and he's in here, like it's awesome. Yeah, I, to be honest, I was really shocked. So that's not the first one he's in, um, I'm trying to think. Um, so I can't even remember how I, I got him involved. Um, so I know I met him very briefly at a gig because he was there shooting and I was there like rolling around on the floor shooting as well. But I don't, but I, I don't even know that I spoke to him that night. Right. So I don't know how, but he definitely sent me something um, in this one, um, which does have a seven inch in it. So if we're talking about being related to music, um, it's got this, which is very dusty um, because we um, spray painted all the sleeves in like a, a room where like, uh, I guess cars are usually painted. So, so yeah, so um, Byron, Tony and I basically stood there with like all these like um stencils spray painting all these seven inch records and it's um a mutual extermination and club and night hammer record impulse it's a uh, night night hammer is tony right yeah tony, yeah yeah tony mountford Who, who's who's yeah. the other who's the other oh byron jackson yeah um so that was really cool they did um and then with that we did like a little launch as well and they did, they split the tracks into like three pieces and we put speakers around the room and then you could kind of wander and they would go in and out of sync. It was really cool. Um, we did that up at ooh, MK2 Gallery, um, which I don't even know if it's still around anymore, um, but up in like East London. Right. Okay. Um, but yeah, oh, I was trying to. So Gullick's got a piece in here, along with loads of other stuff. This is a really good one. I actually, Byron and I went to um, to Nottingham a couple, well, at the end, well, a couple of years ago. I'm at the end of 2019. And um, we went to the Nottingham Contemporary Museum. And there was a copy of this in there. 
um like in the they've got like the zine nottingham zine library like in one of the back rooms or they had at the time and this was like there like right on the shelf and i was like oh that's cool it's in a gallery um, <laughs> but um, oh yeah so a gullock that is not gullock um but yeah and it fits really well. And then we've got, of course, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah, loads of stuff. I don't remember what we were talking about now, Joe. No, no, it was the connection. I, I was, I was crowbarring oh, yeah, the music. Connection. Because, music. Uh, yep. Because it's, it's about music. Yeah. Well, no, I was being clunky, but um, I just wanted to like know what the connection, you know. See if there's yeah, no, there is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's I guess about the people. Um, I guess especially the scene that like that like we're re related through. Um, like everybody's quite nice and they do really creative and interesting things. And it's good to kind of, I don't know, get people talking about other stuff because they most people don't just do music. Um, so um, so yeah, it was always, I always like finding out what else people did um and then bullying them into <laughs> submitting work to my zines um, which sometimes it, it very much felt like bullying but um but yeah i like to think they appreciated it afterwards um of course so where can people get this from oh um so indestructibleenergy.com um there, there's a web shop. Um, if zine fairs happen again, then there. Um, there's a mailing list that I email people maybe once a year, 18 months through. It's not very, I'm not very good at keeping that up. Um, yeah, or just send me an email. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But so would you yeah, like, words. so now you're in, um, so you've been in Birmingham for, what did we say, five years, give or take. Yep. How are you finding Birmingham in comparison with London and what's going on? I don't know. I think because of the past like 18 months, it's been a bit skewed, but um, I don't know, there are good people up here. Um, lots of people that, lots of the people we kind of hang out with and know up here are people that we've, we've probably been going to gigs with for like the past 10 years um, when we were in London um because they're all into very similar music and yeah um in fact we're talking <laughs> we're talking about photography i met most of we met most of the people we know up here because a london a band i knew from london was playing in birmingham at the wagon and horses and we didn't know anybody yet and um i sent them an email just going it'll be good to see you and they put me on the guest list and there was no nobody else on the guest list. Oh. <laughs> when, I, when I rocked up, I'm like, hi, I'm Julie Kane. And um, one of the promoters, who's a really, really good friend of mine now, um, just went, oh, Julie R. Kane, you're the photographer. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was slightly, um, yeah, no, it was great. Um, and they're great. And yeah, they laugh about it still. Because <laughs> Who was the promoter in that game? Um, so it was um, Black Hole Promotions. Um, so I think they're the same ones that put you on. Um, Don and Karen, yeah. basically. Um, yeah, yeah, they're amazing. Um, they're the best people ever. But but yeah, so Birmingham, people go to gigs. There's, um, well, some people go to gigs. A few people go to a lot of gigs up here, I think. Um, but I don't know. I it, it's hard. I think, and I don't know if you find that since you moved out of London. Like sometimes we we go, oh, if we were in London, it wouldn't be like this. And then you think, and you're like, actually, London wasn't like that at the time. Like you didn't have tons of people going to every, you know, to tons of gigs. You just had like a group of people that went to like all the same gigs, and it felt really busy all the time. And then we moved up here and. Maybe it's because we didn't know all those people yet. Um, it just felt like it was very sparse, um, like attendance wise. 
But then, I don't know, thinking about London and going, oh, things were things better? And maybe at the time, but like now they wouldn't be the same, would they? No. Well, well like we played a variety of gigs in Birmingham and London to mm -hmm. both lots of people and to not lots of people. So in both places. <laughs> Fair enough. But yeah, it makes no, you know, it's the same everywhere. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, re I'm yeah, yeah. representing Birmingham today with a riot season ticket, <laughs> by the way. Even, I, nice. I don't think he says he's from Birmingham. I think he says he's Willem Hall, which is... Uh, yeah. uh, Out, just outside. But we have plans. We've got lots of stuff going on. Yeah, well, well, of course. Birmingham's great. But so um, aside from talking about all your, uh, your business here, we're essentially yep. supposed to be talking about records. Okay. And um, I would, there's there's going to be some. I know I'm going to ask these, and I know there's a whole pile of caveats. So I'll just I'll, we'll just crack okay. in and see where we go, and you can just cool. I'll, tell you what, I'll probably let you steer. But um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so t tell us about record shops. Tell us about a favorite record shop, or any opinions on that, or maybe where you were growing up. Um. Or how much you hate them. I <laughs> <laughs> so I have been to a lot of record shops. Um, I like looking at record sleeves. I'm more of a visual person. I um, yeah, I've been to been to a lot of record shops. I've taken some pictures of Hey Colossus in a record shop in Cambridge. Okay. Cambridge, yeah. Um, there is one second. I do have one record which has a story that I think is very funny, which you might not. So on the Isle of Wight, visiting my grandparents um, and Byron, myself and my sister went into this record shop and Byron was in heaven because it was like, they call it a record shop, but it was a basement um, with like a, a million seven inches. Like it was ridiculous. And I found this record sleeve, which I absolutely loved yeah. because I don't know why. I just find it really striking. I like the image. It was empty, the record sleeve. Empty record sleeve. And the guy would not let me just buy the record sleeve. Really? So we go through every single seven inch to find the record that came in it. And we did. It's here. It exists. <laughs> and, and I bet it was only 50p or something, right? God. Yeah, I don't even think it was 50p. I think he ended up giving it to us because because Byron bought a stack of seven inches. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. I spoke to him last night and I was like, I'm going to talk about this because I think it's a funny story. Um, and he was like, well, I was happy because he left with <laughs> like a stack of seven inches. Oh, well, I've not heard anyone say there's about record shops on the Isle of Wight. So that's that's a fresh one. Yeah. Yeah, I, we were just like walking down the, the street and it was like, oh, is that a record shop? I think the only, if I remember correctly, the only, um, there was just an A board outside that said like records with an arrow and that was it. So it could have been a ploy to like abduct us, but it wasn't. <laughs> abduct vinyl nerds in a basement. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where, well, where? I mean... <laughs> 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 oh, I was just going to say, where else would you abduct vinyl nerds from? <laughs> no, no, quite. Basements everywhere. <laughs> where, where on the Isle of Wight was it? Um, in Ride. Is, is so, that where your grandparents live? Yeah. Hmm. Do you go there often? Uh, I went there kind of a couple summers to visit and stuff, but they, they were very active. So they'd travel a lot and like drive around and yeah. I haven't been. Mm. I, I, I think mm. I've been to like once. First year of school, it was a school trip. So I just, yeah. Weird. There was an ice skating rink not too far from their house. <laughs> Good memories. <laughs> yeah, as you do in the summer. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was just a place to go. They had a really nice back garden with like a plum tree, and my grand used to make jam, and it was delicious. Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. Just hanging out. Just hanging out on the Isle of Wight. Yeah. Um, but. Oh, did you catch 
what, 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 how, did you get over there? how did you get over there? Did you catch the, the ferry or the, uh, the fast thing? The thing. That, the ferry. The ferry. The ferry. Yeah. It, there's the fast thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. There's a. Is it a hovercraft? Right. Hovercraft. I think it's a hovercraft. I've never been on it, but yeah, it's like a third of the time. Yeah. So I, I was in um, no fruit machines. Yeah. Well, Stan was in um. My oldest son was at a university mm. in Portsmouth, and um, we wandered around mm. around that area, and like we for the first time ever, I'd never seen a hovercraft take off. That's what they call it, right? And it was just on the beach, yeah. just like on the stones. Yeah. <laughs> just sitting there, look looked like it had been abandoned, and I was just standing there, and it went woof, like, and, and then just yeah, just from the, <laughs> the stones. <laughs> That's what it did. Yeah. That's crazy. I know. I wonder if I wonder if it makes you feel yeah. sick, a bit choppy, hitting the waves. Yeah, I don't know because it it kind of sits on top, whereas boats kind of the weight yeah. push down. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no. Well, there we are. No, I, I've no, I've never thought about it that that <laughs> intensely. But I'm really glad I've never been on the hovercraft. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Record of memories. Okay. Oh. Um, your questioning face is very reassuring <laughs> yeah um okay so i don't know what kind of memories but this is one record that i own which i love brilliant record oh no don't freeze you're frozen Don't freeze. Unfreeze. Uh -oh. oh, yes, there we are. We've unfrozen. We're okay. back in the uh -oh. game. <laughs> okay, so did you see my record? Uh, yeah, we have Bikini Kill. Love it, yeah. Yep, I got yeah. it for my birthday. Um, and it came with a zine. Hey. <laughs> oh, they Which, love that, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, they're the best. And yeah. the part about this zine is it's one page, and they basically say, one page is the perfect size of a zine. So it is one page, but like you couldn't read it on the train. Oh, cool. Full poster size. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. So yeah, it's awesome. So memories, I got it for my birthday. It has a zine and I really like it. I do. I'm awful. I tend to listen to most music from my phone on headphones walking around. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, I do very often sing along and can't hear myself, which freaks people out, but is very funny, um, including this one, which is quite aggressive, actually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. Um, and people don't bother me. So like no like the you know the people handing out flyers they don't they don't bother me <laughs> they just let me like walk along yeah. so so yeah happy memory the um the uh, bikini kill huggy bear split mm. twelve inch is mm. in my is in my top two or three ever split oh, nice. LPs I love that record I don't I I I don't know would you have been in the country when huggy bear played on the word. No, maybe not. Whew. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's really excellent. They, yeah, and um, but that bikini kill round is brilliant. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's really exciting. They're reissuing quite a lot, and um, they when you if you order straight from them, then they write loads of little notes, and it's really exciting. Cool. She's a. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you see the? Have you seen the film? The punk singer. Um, I haven't yet, actually. I'm awful. Yeah. Um, no, I haven't seen it yet. She's got illness. Right. She, she, what, what the hell's the illness? Yeah. Does she have limes? I wanted to say that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, which just, I don't know, the fact that she's, like, still trying to do stuff is just pretty badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, actually, they warn you about that in the fields, like, around here. Like yeah. wearing shorts in long grass and like you get like little ticks attached to you and that's how you yeah yeah 
that's my knowledge my knowledge of that disease yeah. is that but, um, oh my 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 grandmother in the states um used to um because they had a farm so she would wear sweatpants when she was out and she would tuck it into her socks to protect her from ticks yeah and yeah it worked i mean it works she didn't have lines yeah. um but yeah um because it's all wooded and stuff in connecticut like loads of woods and she had like eight acres untouched so just left it kind of wooded which was quite nice yeah. to i just it was weirdly mm. when you're just walking dog yeah. a couple days ago up on the hills and there is like yeah. saying be careful so oh wow they uh public service announcement for everyone yeah. <laughs> wear long trousers in the woods yeah <laughs> yep. um uh next one on the list that i send you is bargain fine oh no. i don't know maybe my blondie record again oh. actually if we want to talk bargains um i get a lot of free records oh there you go so, um oh yeah so have you take you must have some pictures on the sleeves yeah so okay so at the moment this is very topical um so i've got this one Ooh. oh yeah which, which still <laughs> is still in the wrap um but it's a telescopes record it's a live one um and just the other day we found this photo on ebay on a t-shirt <laughs> I feel like I've made it because someone's bootlegging my art. Cool. Right? Yeah, oh my God, yeah. Let's have a look at the front of the sleeve just so we know what it is. Oh. I know. Okay. Nice, Ooh. nice. And where was the photo taken on the back? Um, so the one on the back, I'm pretty sure was Colchester Art Center. Hmm. And the one on the front, I'm pretty sure was um, Oxford, and I can't remember the venue. Okay, Jericho. Maybe, maybe is it? No, it was. I think it was. It was a downstairs one. Wheat sheaf. I can't remember the name. Yeah, I, that that's the name that comes to mind, but I'm I can't remember. Um, um, so were you following them around on tour then? What was happening there? Yeah, so at the time, One Unique Signal was um, was playing as um, as the telescopes with Stephen. So it was kind of like a double tour. So they'd play One Unique Signal and then the telescopes. Um, so yeah, I went to a couple gigs. Um, my folks and my sister at the time lived um, in like Suffolk. So I went up there and then my sister and I drove down to Colchester as you do. Um, and it, it was a really interesting venue, um, yeah. actually. Um, and then, yeah, Oxford, it wasn't that far from London. I think it was a nice day. So we just took a quick trip out. <laughs> there you, go. you got others there? What others? Um, I do. I've got this one, which I'll take out of the plastic, which is the Hairs record. Yeah. This one here. Which is, Oh yeah, which is very <laughs> worth a listen. Um, it's it's one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, and then yep, that which was taken at Supersonic. Um, I can't remember what year. A year that we lived up here. Mm. Um, I'm gonna guess at 2017. Yeah, something like that. Um, and it was boiling in that venue, absolutely boiling. Mm. Um, they were great. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I listened to it all the time. And I realized that I start the, the, um, I start the record, the album, um, as I'm leaving my house at a certain point every time. So for ages, there's this one squeaking sound that I thought was a sign I was passing. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't it was on the record um, it's amazing yeah. um <laughs> it's a great record though isn't it? Yes. yeah i love it i love it if you don't have it and there are any left buy it um yeah well um i don't know if there are any left actually no there's there's talk of something happening which um we oh. can talk about once we finish recording but uh 
I know what's happening with the next album. I know that much. Ah, and we'll talk okay, about that once cool. we finish recording as well. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a great record. So you took that picture. That was at Supersonic, the Birmingham Festival yeah. that we mentioned. Yep. Birmingham Festival. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dave and Liz also used to do a Cine to festival, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, they did. Um, yeah. yeah. There's pictures it, of yours from there as well, I've seen. Yeah, um, we went one year and we were really keen to go back the next year, but then it hasn't happened since. Um, but but yeah, oh, it was amazing. Um, and yeah, that little river. Um, yes. <laughs> got your van over in the end. Yes, yeah, so it's Bishop's Castle place in um, yeah. Shropshire, just south of Shrewsbury. Yeah, quite a yeah. Yeah, you have to lug all the gear over the river. Great. It's insane. <laughs> yeah, but then there's like the party and the, I don't know, the parade. I mean, I guess it's not, is it a parade? But so it's chucking their sins into the river or whatever. Yeah. Eat. Yeah. Eaten. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was pretty cool. Um, have you got any other records there that uh, you're, you're, um, this is what I'm keen on. So. Okay. Um, so I've got one that I did. So this is, it's a gray hairs one. Um, so yeah, it was, it was really fun. They did, um, they did a live recording um, and we went out to Nottingham um, and spent the night, um, yeah, taking pictures of them mm. doing a lot of the songs over and over again. Um, so they did their video for Hydropana and um, yeah, and then recorded the whole set. It was great, but it's got this um, this really nice um, like sleeve as well, like inner sleeve. Um, so yeah, it was it was lots of fun. Um, I had a blast, and then. Yeah, and then this looks amazing. Um, so yeah, I mean, I th I'm I'm pretty sure Chris did the um, like tidying everything up, so it looks really good as a record. But but I was happy to be kind of part of it and do the photos and stuff. It was really really fun. Yeah, uh, it must it must feel excellent to see the pictures like that. Though. That's, a, that's yeah, a it's. Yeah, it's it, it's like one of, it's one of the reasons I started doing the zine as well, like to stop just looking at pictures digitally. So, yeah, it's quite I don't know. Every time I see like a photo of mine on like a record sleeve that other people own, like people own these records um, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, that, that's really cool. Um, so, yeah. No, but that's the tactile thing. That's what I like. Mm -hmm. that's what I like that's yeah. one of the reasons I do this chat stuff yeah. is like physical media and and like this is a physical media in the same way that a record is yeah it's having and holding is it's i think it's quite powerful it's yeah it's and i i don't know i think i think it's especially like now like everybody is like online all the time you know you know for the past like 18 months it's been like social online and work online and well, for some people, um, and I don't know. I think like physical things are are more important, um, like not just to collect and have things, but to like be able to I don't know appreciate like people's art and you know the effort that people have put in. Because as much as I do listen to a lot of music on my phone, like I definitely appreciate records um, because you can almost feel like everything that's gone into it. Mm. Like, instead of just being like, oh, yeah, I'll just listen to it on my phone and like flick past it and not pay any attention to it, um, yeah. which I think is really important, just appreciating the work people are doing. I agree. I agree. There's something like it's, you know, music is music and yeah. images are images, but just like flashing through them, scrolling down a thing on an Instagram or whatever is... um. It's different, isn't it, than actually holding it? All these images, you could put all these images on your website and go, yeah, here it all is. But to actually yeah. have it and own it and like look at it and feel it and yeah, you feel like you're sort of somehow part of it. Somehow. Yeah, exactly. I think I think that's one of the reasons I started shooting bands, like to feel a bit more part of the music. 
like try to get like what I was feeling being in that venue, like across to people who weren't there. Yeah. Um, and especially, think, especially when you start hitting up the smaller venues and you can get to the windmill and you can get to, yeah. and you're pretty much on the stage with people, you know. Yeah. But that's what, yeah. that's what as, as, as someone who likes looking at band photos, like I, I've just got to let, let the dog out, which is a okay. classic move for these. He's just, the doorbell went and uh, I think it's uh, uh -oh. son number two is back from work. Uh, so you have to go and say hello. Um, um, what the hell was I saying? Yeah, it's just being in amongst them. Uh, and and yeah, for me, and, yeah, and a band photo. And like, I sort of all like, I um, I love sort of uh, like, okay, Glennie Friedman's one of my favorites, right? Yeah. So like, he's, I've just randomly picked him, but he's like, gets so in amongst it. No, there's the cramps there. Yeah. You, you feel like he's he can smell it and he's right there and it's yeah. Or when you can pick up things like like sometimes I'll be back looking through photos and I'm like, did somebody spill something at that point? Because <laughs> yeah. you can like see drops of like, I don't know, Coca-Cola or something like in the air, like next to the guitarist, because the lights just hit it just right. And you're just like, yeah, that that was a mess, wasn't it? Yeah. And you can <laughs> but it's also like really sharp and like amazing um, so my, one of my favorite pictures you took of, of us so i mm -hmm. uh, it's not i'm not in it it's uh john richards guitarist um, yeah he's like holding his guitar up like this and it's at that um this is diy thing you probably yeah know. and rachel silver rockets in the background yeah and maybe others but he's just like holding his guitar and like you're just you're nearer to him than i am you're you know you're yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. like it's awesome though like because it's just in amongst it yeah it's I, I don't know I think like the more I was around musicians and like became friends with people like the the more courageous I got um and I was just waiting for the day to get like a black eye from like a headstock or something um especially <laughs> yeah <laughs> like shooting really wide sometimes I don't even focus on like where I am because I'm looking through the lens and then like I'm like oh oh that's too close <laughs> I'm just gonna back up a bit <laughs> it's happened a couple of times but uh, <laughs> not well, getting hit like, you can tell you go up to a singer if they've got the microphone you go up to a singer they'll start singing into the lens yeah but they know like it's part it's, yeah. you know it's part of the theater I don't, it's not even that they're particularly maybe not even wanting the good shot but if you're so close, then you're part of the event. Yeah. So if someone's like, like singing straight down your lens, that's a visual thing for everyone else to look at. Yeah. Like I think there's, yeah. there's you know, being in amongst it. No. My, I think one of my favorite things is getting pictures of the crowd. Sometimes though, especially because because I do so shoot so wide that a lot of the times they're like, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to be in that shot. And then they're like the center of it, which is, is really great. Um, because they're just completely like oblivious and natural and enjoying the music. And you're like, yeah, this is what we're here for. Yeah. Like. No, I agree. Uh, that is, that is, they're, they're part of the event. It's again, it's yeah, not just the band absolutely. in the room and especially in a smaller venue. If there's just a hundred people at the windmill, those hundred people are almost as important as the four or five or six people playing. Yeah. It's the whole event. Isn't it? Yeah, so. absolutely. So, uh, okay. The all on tour is my next subject. Uh oh. Uh. <laughs> no. Um. Trying to think. So, like, I've been to parts of tours. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I um. Oh, so I did drive to Cambridge to meet you guys, and I went to a record store. Yeah, oh, I, I, it's just, it's yeah. just, <laughs> this is just, I, you know, like I, I realized that, uh, you know, yeah. not everyone goes on tour. I realized that, but, you know, it's, uh, um, I don't know, maybe you end up going to a gig somewhere or traveling or yeah. going to the Isle of Wight. I tell you what, that Blondie record yeah. is going to cover all of these. Yeah. I know. To the Isle of Wight. I'm re really glad I dug that out. Um, <laughs> 
I did. So usually it's in a frame, but but we don't have any seven inch sleeves up at the moment. So it's not. So I went looking at the frames and I was like, no, it's not there. So I'd actually look through the records <laughs> to find it. <laughs> um okay no worries that a record that people wouldn't think that you'd pick oh um so i i don't know if this covers it but i did pull out this record oh, that's, hmm? actually, that's actually by low yeah i don't know that record what record's that oh it's great hmm. it's great um so so yeah i mean i like them um i like them a lot they um we actually i got this record after we actually went out to toronto oh going on tour um to, to visit people and um we saw them in like a town hall kind of venue like not like a town like a youth center kind of venue mm. um, and it had like a little stage that like you could see like kids doing like well young people doing their like school play on and stuff it was really cool um but it was it was really weird and we really wanted to buy the record there but they couldn't get anything into canada because of customs so we actually had to come back here and order it oh really? yeah it's it's like um, i find it quite i don't haven't done it that often i guess I quite find it quite weird when you're in another country and you go to a gig. I don't yeah. Know. No, it's it's weird. So so Canada, it wasn't too bad, and like going to gigs in the states, it's not too bad. But I I do remember I went to a gig in the states um, that um, a friend of mine um, who I know through he does photography stuff um and he lives in massachusetts um in worcester um which makes me laugh um because they don't say it right um but he put on a gig and i happened to be home like visiting my grandparents at the time and my cousins and i drove out um and me and my little sister were there and um and both her and i she must have been like I don't know, 11 or 12 at the time, maybe. And both of us were just like, why is no one dancing? Like they were just standing there. And it was like, you know, like a punky kind of like, how do you stand still for this kind of gig? And they were just like stone straight. And we were just like, okay, this is weird. Um, so I think, I think you get like audiences interacting very differently in different countries. Um, but it is, it, it is easy because at least they still speak English. So you can still order from the bar and stuff and you still like, but because going to gigs in other countries um, is sometimes really hard because, well, I'm rubbish with learning new languages and I try really hard, but when it's like loud and then you're trying to like use like your broken French to order like water and there's just no, you know, with my accent and my bad French, um, so yeah, going to gigs in other countries is very interesting. Yeah, I, yeah, it's experience. How do they pronounce Worcester in Worcester? Oh, I I can't even make my mouth say it. It's like they actually like say like War Worcester or and uh I don't know. I'll I'll record it and get them, get someone to say it and send it to you. Worcester, it's like different. Worcestershire. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I don't know that low record. Oh, you should. Yeah, I've got, I've got, yeah. It looks quite, um, like it looks sort of handmade somehow. Uh, I think, I think it might have been like a watercolor or a screen print, but it's just, it's just a digital print. But it is, I, I really do like the artwork as well. Mm. So the final subject I have, yep. uh, uh, this again, could be a dead end, is 10 inches. Just because I have asked everyone the same sort of question, like regarding it, it, it we can skip over it, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so i don't i don't have any 10 inches um but for issue 10 i did really want to do a 10 inch because i mean 
when else are you going to do a 10 inch? But they're so expensive and you barely get any music. So, so yeah, it didn't happen. So instead, two CDs, um, which I, th I think was, was a worthwhile trade, to be honest. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. A, C, a, CD is about, a CD is about five inches, right? Give or take. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so it would have worked, but but also like like as much as I would really love love to do that because it would just be so cool. Like I make a hundred of them, and like when I did the seven inch one, they were so heavy to carry to zine fairs. Yeah. <laughs> so like the last thing I yeah. Yeah, I don't even know how I'd get 10 inches out to people. So, so it didn't happen. But but double, um, yeah. So that's my 10 inch story. That, uh, that's all you like know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what's the future then? What's your plans? Ooh, in what sense? Um, are, are, are you already thinking of doing number 11 or? So there won't be a number 11 per se. Um, so this collection of 10 is kind of like volume one, and then volume two is going to be something slightly different. Um, so I think it's going to be a little bit more of a mixture of like, like producing them will be really handmade and, tan and tangible and like original pieces, but then the end result will be more of that kind of photocopied um like reproduce stuff yeah yeah okay, cool and then I think it's going to be a bit more targeted so watch this space um because I've got lots of ideas but I'm trying to kind of hone them down a bit and I think we might go back to the um the nice cd sized format of colorless green ideas all right is it still going to be called indestructible energy yeah volume so, two so the website still stands then yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i've made too many flyers so it has to <laughs> stick with it for now yeah <laughs> yeah well and i've got a, i've got a stamp so yeah yeah well, you've invested heavily you've invested heavily <laughs> in your brand exactly um yeah no and i like it it's it's a bit weird like if you google it it just comes up um, like indestructible energy zine, nothing else really comes up. So, I don't know. Mm. Brand recognition. There you go. Always thinking. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to talk about or uh, show? Any other records you're you're on art wise or? Oh, I do have. I so because of the audience, I didn't get out all my Hey Colossus records, and I've got a couple other ones, but they're still in on the shelf. So, um, so no. Check eBay if you want a t-shirt of that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you want a telescopes t-shirt with your photo. Yeah, with my photo, yeah. <laughs> Which you'll be getting naught P from. Yeah, I think it, he's only selling them for like a tenner. So I don't know how he's, or I'm assuming it's a he. I don't know why they, um, whoever it is. Yeah, it sounds, sounds like it sounds a classic he move. <laughs> Well, I wasn't going to say, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I did pull out, because you were talking about inspiration, I did pull out a couple artists that I really like. Go for which it. I can. Okay. I should have asked. I don't know why I didn't ask. Okay. So some of these we've talked about a little bit. So we've got Dave. Dave Briggs, this is absolutely beautiful. I don't know if any are left. I think him and Alexander Tucker put this together and put it out um, maybe like two years ago, but it's so beautiful and it's all like Rhizo printed. So yeah, if you like comics, get one of these, they're amazing. Um, and then we talked briefly about um, John Convery um, mm -hmm. and he's got a new one out. But his photography is just yeah. So it's John. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing. And he's so he's he's 
so good and he like he he's learning new like photography stuff all the time and like yeah. practice modes and I mean his stuff is phenomenal um for this for that issue that you've got he did so 100 prints of that top picture but the bottom picture is different in every issue all right cool so you're the only one that owns that one Joe oh man I'm gonna take, yeah. it, I'm gonna take it to the bank put it in a safe <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then somebody who's been really, um, I guess, like supportive and like really pushing and giving me loads of ideas and stuff is this um, illustrator called Paul Ashley Brown um, out of Bristol. Um, and he, when I started talking about like my ideas for indestructible energy and how I wanted to make it like original and reproduced artwork, he actually gave me one of these, which is like a little... Um, I think he called it like a sketchbook scene. Um, and it's basically like something that's from his sketchbook, but like his illustrations are just absolutely amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah. And loads of like comics and zines and stuff. And it's quite, yeah, he's great. Um, so he does this brown or null. They're available online. Um, if you Google, I think Paul Ashley Brown, then yeah, he comes up. Um, and then the last one I got is a new friend I've made called um, Richard Lambert, who also has a piece in the new issue. But um, his stuff is really great. And he does loads of um, he does loads of stuff around Birmingham. He's just pulled together like a collaborative zine of different Birmingham photographers, um, which will be out at some point. Um, I'm not sure he settled on a name yet. But um, it, it was really good because he kind of went, right, what are you going to do? And it made me like go out and do some like shooting around Birmingham and actually like take the time to like think things through, which was really nice. It had been ages since I had done that. And it was interesting being on the other, um, the other side of somebody bullying me to give them art instead of me doing the bullying, which was, yeah, absolutely lovely. Um, it's really interesting that um, your influences are all people from your sphere. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I find like I like that network. Ugh, networking sounds so businessy, but I like this the social aspect of all of this, and I think it's something like it's really big and like really like tight knit music scenes. Um, and like, and I think a lot of the more underground art scenes, like when you're not like fighting each other to see who can, you know, sell more stuff or whatever. So it's good. And it's a good way to kind of learn new kind of ideas and methods and processes and stuff as well. Um, so, yeah. So I think, I don't know, knowing other artists kind of, mo kind of motivates you and inspires you to, I don't know, try new things, which... I don't know, isn't that the point of all of this? Like, if you're just doing the same thing all the time, then... Oh, yeah, no, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Fine. But it's good, to, it's, so, it's, yeah. to me, it seems good to be... Because yeah. I think a lot of music people are the same. You're more likely to be influenced by people from who you've just played a gig with or who, yeah. you know, just through talking after a gig, it's like, oh, yeah, and I did this and I did that. And you're like, oh, yeah, no, I could do this and I could do that. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's quite nice. Um, and then, oh, I just have one more little. So this is a photographer based out of the States called Kayla, Kayla Story. Um, and I actually went to high school with her and um, she was a couple of years younger and I took her to her first gig, which makes me feel really old. Um, and like, yeah, and she's great. And then she's done like amazing things. She's got like a master's in fine art and like loads of shows and stuff and I'm taking partial credit. Um, of course. <laughs> um, but no, so yeah, and I don't know. Yeah, people inspire me, like the things that they're doing and them being excited about things. Um, and I don't know, people who do like things that challenge me and what I'm doing. So yeah, kind of pushes me to, well, do, I guess. But yeah, that was all. Those are Those are my... The ones that I really wanted to show show yeah, you. Have it. It's awesome. Yeah. Let's um let's say goodbye. Let's say thank you very much oh. for speaking. Let's wave. What we do is we wave.
and then I press oh. stop, and then we'll say goodbye okay. properly afterwards. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Bye, guys. No Take problem. Bye-bye. <laughs> Where's the stop button? There it is. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>